When you're doing any kind of statistical test that's very common, such as ANOVA or hypothesis testing, you want to make sure your data are normally distributed before you get started because that assumption that your data is normally distributed is crucial to the ANOVA analysis or the hypothesis testing working correctly. So let's take a look at how to test for a normality and what the various tests are. So as I said, you need to make sure your data is normally distributed before you use the normal distribution to do ANOVA or a t-test, anything like that. There's several methods to test for normality. You can use a histogram, you can look at skew and kurtosis, you can use probability plots, or you can use the chi-square goodness of fit. Let's look at all of those in more detail. Here's a histogram. So histograms give you a way to visually analyze your data and see does it look like the bell curve shape, that normal shape, or is it a different shape? If we look at this graph, yes, it is normally distributed. We have a nice bell curve shape here. Everything is good. Our assumption of normality is fine. We can go ahead with our analysis. Notice that it doesn't have to be a perfect bell curve shape. We have some data right here that are a little bit lower that break the shape just slightly. But overall, if we drew a bell curve on top of this histogram, it would line up very well. That's not the case with this histogram. This histogram is not bell shaped. It has a long tail right here that tapers off as we go up in value of vacation days taken. So this data is not normally distributed and we cannot use analyses like ANOVA on this particular data because it doesn't fulfill our assumption of normality. When you're looking at histograms and you're checking the shape, we saw this tail here. So you want to make sure that you're looking for long tails like this. You also want to check to see if your data are symmetrical. If they're symmetrical, then it's more likely to be normally distributed than not. You also want to make sure that you don't have several peaks in here, and that's called bimodal or multimodal data. You want to have unimodal data in your histogram. In this case, your data is unimodal. You have one main peak right here, but you have a tail, and that tail results in a non-symmetrical data set. I mentioned skew for that example. So in that previous example where our histogram was not normal, it had a positive skew. When you have positive skew, you have a tail to the right. When you have negative skew, you have a tail to the left. Now normally distributed data has no skew. It's symmetrical, it doesn't have a tail like this. Kurtosis describes how sharp your peak is or how flattened it is. So if you have a mesocurtic distribution, that is your standard normal data. And that kurtosis is somewhere around 3.0. When you have a leptocurtic peak, you have a very sharp peak, which means your standard deviation is small. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing as long as your data are normally distributed, but it's just something to be aware of in your data set when you're comparing two sets of data. If you have platycurtic data, that means your data is kind of flattened. It has a larger standard deviation and it is flatter than what would be considered normal. So if your data are leptocurtic, you're going to have a higher kurtosis. If they're platycurtic, you're going to have a lower kurtosis for this. Note that you need a relatively large sample size to make a good judgment on skew and kurtosis. If you have a sample that's less than about 100, it's going to be difficult to tell if you truly do have any skew and kurtosis in your data. Another test for normality is probability plots. Now, you can do these by hand, or you can use statistical software to make your process easier. A lot of statistical software packages will automatically calculate these for you if you input your data set. Regardless of what you use, you need a sample size of at least 30 to get enough data density to be able to tell if your data are truly normally distributed. What you do, or what your software will do for you, is that you put your data in ascending order, least to greatest. 
you rank your observations starting at observation one and then you move on from there. You will calculate your plotting position or where on your x-axis your point falls. After you label your data scale, you'll draw your points. Those are those purple diamonds seen on this curve. And then you'll draw the line of best fit. And that's the black line in this case. So you want your data to fall very closely to that line of best fit. The further away it is from that line, the less the fit works. You can use that line to determine the normality of your curve. So if your data are generally bunched around that line, then you have good normally distributed data. If the data are far away from the line, then your data are probably not normally distributed, especially if you see your data veer off in a certain direction. final test for normality is the chi-square goodness of fit. And that's basically looking at the difference between your observed value and your expected value. You need a lot of data to do this properly. You need a sample size of at least 125 to be sure that your data are normally distributed. When you're doing chi-square goodness of fit, the reason it's called chi-square is because you're using the chi-square distribution, which looks like this. So you want to see, do my values fall where I expect them to in this distribution, or are they outside the distribution? If they're outside of the distribution, your data are likely to not be normally distributed. So you can use any of these tests you like to look at normality, Depending on your statistical software package, you may prefer one over the other, but all of these will tell you whether or not your data are normally distributed. Usually you can make that assumption, but if you're not sure if something looks funny in your data, then it's a good idea to go ahead and check it. Keep in mind that when you are checking for normality, you need a good sample size. 30 was the minimum for all of these tests, and most of the tests require more. So make sure you have a good data set to work from, so when you run these tests, you know that they're going to be accurate.